Uh, Here we go. Gonna, there's actually a handout, uh, but <laughs> this is a handout that if there aren't enough handouts, it's no big deal because it's Masechus Megillah and there's a zillion of them in the base measures, so you can always look on in a gemara. Um, Should we go get them? No, but let's first give these out and see how many more we need, and then we'll get a few Masechus. Yeah, actually, it is a good idea. Once you go to the shelf and get the head of bed of the shas, get a couple of them, whatever's there. <laughs> so that, yeah. Hold on. What? Yeah, yeah. You have Masechus Megillah over there, right? You design them in bed. Mm-hmm. There's only two in the shop. Only two more? Okay, we'll say. Well, who, who doesn't have a who doesn't have a copy? Who doesn't have? Dove? Dove needs Dove can look on with me. Dove? Who else? Who doesn't have? Dove doesn't have? Who else doesn't have? You have shine? Yeah, I got it. Okay, so we're good. Beautiful. Okay. In the middle of Daf you design on his bed. Has he joining us? Yeah. Okay, so get, so get a chair. Is your popcorn ready? Yeah. The big one, the big one in the shop, wasn't it? Uh, they're, they're oh, I looked, but I... Is it, is it in a smaller... Is it a part of a smaller Misafi? Or should be... Should tell us Megillah. Do you have Megillah? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I explained what the shear is already. So here's what we're going to do. There's, there's, um, the origin of this shear, just to tell you how I put it together, was uh, I learned Megillah, um, second year in Kalal, I think. Just like as a Bikiyas project uh, in the evening, I, I went to Masechus Megillah. Uh, and when my Chavrus and I, when we hit this Gemara, we we were very into learning Agadatas carefully. The tendency when you're learning Bikiyas is to just blow through the Agadata. One way to do it. This particular Chavrusa, when we hit Agadatas, we looked up every Pasuk, we think about why that Pasuk was chosen, like we 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 really went through the agatha, and uh, and when when it came to this agatha, I'll share with you the questions we asked as we went through it. But really, the way I'm going to go through it is the way the thinking that we did at the time when we learned through it and tried to figure it out. And when we finished, we realized, oh my gosh, we just hit on something very important. So here we go. We're going to start in the middle of the page, where it says Amr of Yochanan. There's a line that begins with the words Amr of Yochanan. It's probably about 20 lines down. Amr of Yochanan, Amr of Yochanan, Everyone see that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a little olive with a square bracket next to it on the word Yochanan. Everyone see that? Chazi, you got it? Liar. No, thank you. Good. Amr Rabbi Yochanan said, and some say it's taught in a brighter, Me'av ve'esrim zekenim. 120 elders, otherwise known as the Anshe Knesset HaGdola, the men of the Great Assembly. Uvahem kaman nebiyim, tiknush monasir b'chotu l'asegah. 120 elders and among them some prophets. Anyone know who the Nevi'im who were part of the Anshe Knesset HaGdola were? Ezra. Ezra was one of them. Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, Malachi, Mordechai, Daniel. Okay, the problem with Malachi is that Malachi, a lot of the sources indicate that he's the same person as Ezra. And yes, he's from the same time. Daniel. Um, what? Daniel. Zechariah. Right. Daniel. Well, so he has two two books named after him. According to that. Okay, uh, so they established Tiknu uh, Shmonasre uh, Brachotose. They established 18 Brachot, meaning the Shmonasre comes from them. Tanu Okay. Okay. Oh, wait. I, we should have started two lines before that. See, two lines before that where it says, Tanya, Shimana Pakuli. He's dear Shmonasri Brachot Lisnei Rebbe Gamliel Al Aseder Biyavnin. Shimon Hapakuli was a guy who was sort of like a a baltfila, like a chazan, like a he was like a tefila guy, and he set up the eighteen brachot before Rebbe Gamliel 
in order in Yavne. Okay. <coughs> now, that was long after the Anshek Nezad Agdala. Yavne is the community that Jew, that it, that's where the Jews went when they were when the, after the Beit Hamikdash was destroyed. The center of Jewish life moved for a period of time to the city of Yavne. You guys aware of that? Yeah. You've heard that before? You know, sort of the Jehovah Menzakai, where you give me Yavne and they destroy your slime and the Jewish community for a while. There was, there was actually like an independent Jewish commonwealth based in Yavne. Um, so it says here that the fact that it says that that they set that they they or, they put the brachos in the order that they're in in Yavne. Basically, to make a long story short, with these first few lines that we read, the Anshe Knesset Agdola. Listen carefully. The Anshe Knesset Agdola, who were the beginning of the Second Temple period, a few hundred years before this, four hundred years before this. Remember, the base, Second Base Major stood for four hundred years. We learned that, right? In that history, history lecture. Um, good talk. In history talk. Right? The Second Beit Hamikdash stood for approximately 400 years. The Anshe Knesset Gadol were the builders of the Second Beit Hamikdash. They also established the the, the law of, of they established lots of things like laning and other things that are part of our lives. And one of the things they established was this 18 bracha thing called Shmon Esrei. But apparently it wasn't in the order that it was in. Things were much more free and easy. People sort of you had to say all 18, but it didn't really matter which order you said them in sort of freestyle. Um, <coughs> along came Shimon HaPakuli in, in front of Rabban Gamliel, Shimon HaPakuli with Rabban Gamliel in Yavne, and he put them in the order that they're in. So that that's our first piece of critical information the Gemara is telling us, and we're going to see later on why it's so important to tell us the time period, <coughs> that the Shimon Esrei was put into the order that it's in, not by the Ashik Nesvegadol, but later on in Yavne. Okay, here we go. Tanur Abanam. Minayin she'omrim avot. Everyone with me now? See where I am? Does everyone see where I am? I'm at the end of a line. Tanur Abanam minayin. The first, the next word is, the, the first word on the next line is minayin she'omrim avot. Everyone got it? Good. So it says in a brighter. Chachamim ta. Minayin she'omrim avot. How do we know that we're supposed to mention the forefathers? How many forefathers were there? Three. Three forefathers. Um, how do we know they're supposed to say the bracha for the fathers? What's the bracha for the fathers? The first bracha of Shmon Esrei. Our scroll has done us all a great favor by titling each of the paragraphs of Shmon Esrei. Have you noticed that in the Art Scroll Center? There's a little one, a single word title, or a couple words, sometimes it's two words, introducing each bracha. That's actually very helpful for this year. How do we know that we say avot? How do we know... From where, where do we get this from? Basically, what this Bryce said, this is going to be a very long Bryce said. This Bryce is going to continue on to the next summer. This whole thing we're going to be doing now is this Bryce said. Well, sort of. There's going to be some diversions out of the Bryce and then back into the Bryce. The comments woven into the Bryce. It's a weird situation. But basically, they're asking, where do we get this from that there has to be a bracha mentioning Avram Yitzhak and Yaakov? Why? Shinamar, as it says in the Pasuk, Havu la Hashem b'nei Elim. Give honor to Hashem or give glory to Hashem. Praise God. Abu B'nai Elim, sons of mighty ones. So who are the sons of mighty ones? I guess it means the Abu. Okay. Uminayin Shomrim Gvurah. And how do we know that you're supposed to mention God's might? That's the second bracha of Shmonas, right? Talks about God's might, right? During the rain and Atagi Borla Olam Hashem, Machayim Eti Matarav Lo Hashia. That you, you're able to feed everybody. Machalka Chayim Chesed. Bring people back to life. So mech no flim, rofei cholim. You heal people. You lift people up. Matira surim. All these, just God's power. The whole bracha is about God's power. How do we know you're supposed to mention God's power? Shenemar habul Hashem kavod vaot. The rest of the pasuk, right? Habul Hashem b'nei elim. Habul Hashem kavod vaot. Uminayin shomrim kedushas. And how do we know we're supposed to also mention God's holiness? Shenemar. What's the next line in the in the parak of Tehillim? Habul Hashem. Kivod Shemo, Ishtachavu Hashem, Behadrat Kodesh. Right? Bring, uh, give honor to uh, God, give honor to God to the glory of His name, uh, to the honor of His name, bow down to God with uh, Behadrat Kodesh, holiness, beauty of holiness, whatever it is. Okay, splendor of holiness. So basically, the, the Pasuk in Tehillim, Habu Hashem Bene Elim, Habu Hashem Kavod Vaoz, and then Ishtachavu Hashem Behadrat Kodesh is the source. 
according to the Brighta for the first three Brachot of Shmon Esrei. Okay? First we're going through this Brighta, it's going to seem a bit disjointed, we'll put it all together. Umara Ulomar Bina Achar Kedusha. Now, notice the question just shifted. There's going to be a couple shifts in the, in the line of questioning the Gemara, that this Brighta takes. I want you to pay close attention to them. So far, with the way we asked the first three, we didn't ask about the order. We asked, how do you know you're supposed to say this? Abba. How do you know you're supposed to say God's power? How do you know you're supposed to say God's holiness? Now it says, how do we know that Da'at is supposed to come after holiness? That's a different kind of question. That's not the question, how do I know I'm supposed to say Da'at? It's, it's asking a question about its placement. Everyone follow? It's like difference in questioning. Okay. I mean, I, uh, where is it? Umarau, what did they see? Why did they see fit? Lomar bina achar kedusha to say the bracha for understanding. That's atachonen ladam daat. That is the fourth bracha of Shmonesre, the first of the middle bracha. Shmonesre is divided into three sections. You have the first three bracha, which are the same in every amida all year long, whether it's neila on Yom Kippur or or a regular Wednesday mincha. Right. The, the first three brachot are always identical. The last three brachot are always identical. From Rise. <laughs> through to the end of Shmonesra. It's also always identical. Shabbos, Musaf, doesn't matter what. You always have those same three things at the end. Modim, Sim Shalom, or Shalom Ra, whatever. It's always the same. The end. The middle of Shmonesra is very, it's always different. Shabbos, Shachar, Shabbos, Mimcha, Shabbos, uh, you know, you know Mariv, Musaf, it's always, that, that's where, that's where the party starts, you know? So, on a regular, we're, we're not talking about the weekday Shmonesra. So the first bracha of the weekday section is Atachon and Latamdat, the bracha for understanding. That bracha is about, about, and God grants us the ability to understand things, to think. So why, why was it placed after Kedusha? Shinemar, as it says in the Pasuk, V'hikdishu et Kedosh Yaakov ve'et Elokei Yisrael Ya'aritu. Because it says in the Pasuk, Pasuk in Yeshaya, that they, they shall sanctify the Holy One of Yaakov, and the God of Israel, they will, uh, they will <coughs> ascribe value to him, they will praise him. The and juxtaposed to that Pasuk, the very next Pasuk says, <laughs> So here you go. In Yeshaya, you have two Pasukim in a row. First Pasuk says, talks about God being holy. The next Pasuk says, once they have said, once these people have declared God's holiness, the next step is that the people who are to'e ruach, er, those who err, who make errors of the spirit, or the, those who stray of the spirit, spiritual, uh, those who are spiritually mistaken will know understanding. <laughs> so based on the on the on the order of those two psukim, holiness of God is declared. People who were off the derech have get, regained understanding. So there you go. What are you doing, Ravi? You're just focusing in on the words of the Gemara. Okay. Umara ulomar tshuva acharbina. And now again, same line of questioning. Now we're we're with the line of questioning of the order. Why is tshuva? Oliver, focus in. Why is tshuva after understanding? Dichtiv. Now brings another pasuk. As it says in the pasuk, the pasuk in Yeshaya, also a different part of Yeshaya. Ulevavo yavin v'shav rafalo. Very nice. The pasuk says, talking about a person who sins and he's going to do tshuva, his heart will understand. This is usually the process, right? Your heart. You have a change of heart. Your heart understands. So there's understanding. V'shav and then you do tshuva. So very nice. Understanding is followed by tshuva. So that's why in our Shmonets, right? After Atachone, what do we say? Right? Hashivenu Abinu Lazarazecha. Right? Tshuva. Baruch Hashem Harotzeh B'Tshuva. Very nice. But then the problem is in that Pasuk it says, Ulevavo Yavin, understand, Vishav and do tshuva, Virafalo, and he will be healed. But the bracha of healing doesn't come after tshuva. So the Gemara asks, Ihachi, if so, if you're going to quote that pasuk, Lema Rafua Batra de Tshuva. So then Rafua, I know this is the boring part of the shir. Stick with it. Rafua, focus in here. So if, if this is the pasuk, I promise you the payoff is big in this shir. It will get very exciting as we understand what's happening. 
Lema Rafua Batra Tshuva. If this is the pasuk we're going to use, Ulevavo Yavin Veshav Virafalo. If you're going to quote that pasuk, so Rafua should have been after Tshuva, but it's not. After Tshuva, we have Slachlanu, and then we have Reivan Yenu, and then we have Rafua. Rafua is number eight, and Tshuva is number five. So, so according to this this pasuk, Levavo Yavin Veshav Virafa. Rafua should be number six. Low. Low Salkazaitum. Don't think that. Dichtiv, because there's a different pasuk that says, Visha Vyashuva Lashem, Virachamehu, and one will do chuba to God, and God will have mercy on him, Vela Lokehu, and he will return to God, Kiyarbe Lisloach, because God is very forgiving. God forgives. So in this pasuk, tshuva is followed by slicha. Slicha is not after. Yes, it is. I thought, I thought it was no, no, no. The next one after tshuva is slicha, and then re'e, and then and then refua. So he says that's why slicha is after tshuva. So the gemara asks, umai chazit is a samach aha smoch aha. Umai chazit means why are you picking and choosing? Think about what just happened in the Gemara. We have a pasuk that puts Rafua after Tshuva. So we said, oh. and we use that same pasuk to say that Tshuva is after Bina. So we said, how come Rafua is not after Tshuva? So we said, oh, because there's another pasuk where uh, something else is after Tshuva. So we said, well, why are you picking and choosing? Why are you using the pasuk? <laughs> Wait, you're going to say that the reason we're not following the order of this pasuk is because we got a different pasuk to follow? But, but you're following the first half of this pasuk with that one. Why did you use that? Umar Raita. Umay Chazit. What did you see? Smoke the To make it juxtaposed to that. Smoke the So we said, no, keep Kachrina, because there's a third pasuk. Which says, Hasoleach Lechol Avonaychi, who forgives all of your sins. Harofe Lechol Tachloaychi, who heals all of your illnesses. Hagoel Mishachat Chayaychi, who redeems your life from the death. So the order there should be Slicha, <coughs> Rafua. So there in that Pasuk, Rafua comes after Slicha. So very nice. So we have one Pasuk that has Rafua right after Tshuva. We have another Pasuk that has Slicha after Tshuva. And then we have another Pasuk which would imply that Rafua is after Slicha. And now we have a third Pasuk which actually says that Rafua is after Slicha. That's why Rafua is after Slicha and Slicha is after Tshuva. It's a crazy Sukhya. It's not a sugya. We're just quoting a bunch of sukkim and, and drawing conclusions from that. We'll get there. We'll get there. Watch. So lememra. Now, but notice the last puzzle we quoted was soleach, rofe, and then goel, which is not the order we have. So the Gemara now says lememra the geula or rafua bater slichi. This implies, does this mean to say that Geula and Rafua come after Slicha, which is what we have? <laughs> but it says in the Pasuk, that you do Tshuva and then you're healed. So the healing should really come after Tshuva. We still want that Pasuk. Ahu lav Rafua the Tachaluim He said, no, that Rafua in the Pasuk, Vishav Virafa, and God, and one does Tshuva and he is healed. That's not actually talking about physical healing. Ella refua the slichai. That's talking about the healing, spiritual healing of forgiveness. And that's why when it says v'shav v'rafa and he will do tshuva and he will be healed, that healing actually it doesn't mean healing. It means forgiveness. So really forgiveness should be after tshuva. So we say, okay. Now, the next question should be, so why is ge'ula in our Shemun before Rafua, according to that Pasuk that had Soleach, Rofe, and Goel, Goel should be after Rafua. Rafua should be after Slicha. So the next question should be, so why is this after this? Look at the change in the tone of the questioning now. We've had no reference. I said it, but there was no reference in the Gemara up till this point about the numbering of the bracha. It was just about what's next to what. Now, the way they ask the question, why is Geula, why is Geula seventh and not eighth? Why is it a flip flop with Rafua? The way they, the way the Gemara asks the question is not what we expected. It throws you for a loop. The Gemara asks the question, why did they see fit to have Geula as the seventh bracha? Suddenly, the number is important. 
Yeah. I'm a rubber. The so rubber said, "You see, this is not this is not the bright anymore. But it's going to go back to the bright." This is a discussion of the Gemara. Rubber said, "Mitosh atidin liga el bashviit," because in the future we will be redeemed. The Jewish people will be redeemed in the seventh. It doesn't say the seventh what. Maybe during a shemitah year. I don't know. I don't know. The fichach. Therefore, kvavah bashviit. Therefore, they they made geula the seventh bracha. We say, wait a second. The Amar Mar, but the, we have a known statement that says Bashishit Kolot. In the sixth, whatever sixth is, I don't know what the sixth is. In the sixth, there will be noises. Bashviit Milchamot. In the seventh, there will be wars. The Mosei Shviit Ben David Ba. And after the seventh, Mashiach is going to come. So you see that in the seventh, there's war. Mashiach comes after it. What does the Gemara say? Milchama Nami. Atchalta de Geulahi. Milchama, war is also the beginning of Geula. Okay, let me recap where we are at this point, just so that we all know we're, what we're saying. We want to start with this discussion of what's the source for Avot, Gvurot, uh, and Kedusha, the first three brachot, but it didn't have, it did not mention order, it just asked for, and it brought this one Pasuk in Tehillim about, about praise, these two Pasuk really in Tehillim about praising God. It left that, and then it said, okay, why is Bina after Kedusha? Why is understanding after Kedusha? Now suddenly we're concerned with the order. And it said, it's after Kedusha because of this positive that says that uh, first, you, first you declare God's sanctity, and then you have a brain, and you can think, and, and, you, and, and you're not off the derech anymore. Good. Okay, so why is uh, Tshuva next? Because it says, it brought a positive that connected knowledge with doing Tshuva. Great. Okay, why is Slicha next? So then it had this whole convoluted thing with these three psukim, but the upshot of it in the end was that after you do tshuva, the next step is repentance. It's, it's forgiveness, sorry. You, you repent and then you get forgiven. And when it said healing, it meant forgiven. Fine. Okay, and now it had to solve the problem. Why was geula? Because in the psukim, geula never came right after, right after forgiveness. It actually came after healing. So we messed with the order. So it had to ask, why is geula where it is? And it asked, why is it in the seventh? Now, obviously, that was a setup. The question was a setup. It was a setup to prepare us for the answer, which was because Geula is in the seventh. So the Gemara then says, and it's a cryptic question. Geula is in the seventh? It didn't say seventh what? Geula is in the seventh, but we have a Brisa that says that Geula is that in the seventh it's war, and Geula is after the seventh. So say war is part of the Geula. Okay. War is part of the Gula. The expression, Atchalta the Gula, as you might have heard in your life, the beginning of the redemption, which people, religious Zionists talk about it all the time, the state of Israel, Atchalta the Gula. This is the only appearance of that phrase. The phrase, Atchalta the Gula, in Chazal, refers to war. Okay? War is the beginning of redemption. All right. Umara Ulo Mar Rufuah Bashminit. Now we're staying with numbers. And why is Rufuah the eighth? We're staying with numbers now. Why is healing the eighth bracha? Because bris mila it happens on the eighth day. which requires healing. Are you buying this answer? Yeah, but is this a great answer? That's why it's the eighth bracha of. of that's why it's the eighth bracha. Okay, we'll get to it. The fichach kvavu b'shmini. Therefore, they made it eight. Umara ulo mar birkat hashanim We're still with the numbers. And why is the bracha of the years? What's birkat hashanim actually about? What's it about? It's about Christ. It's about cash. It's about the economy. The money. Prosperity. Asking God to bless the year. That was prosperity. It's about crops in Eretz Yisrael growing also. Sabeinu mituva. Satisfy us from from the from the from the produce of the land of Israel. Right? That's why in Kutzlar you say mituva. Because you're not being satisfied from the crops of the land of Israel. Eretz Yisrael can be mituva. If they're not boycotting anything. But she eat. Okay. So why is why is Brigadier Shana number nine? <laughs> Amr Rabbi Alexandri, or Alexandri said, Arim. It's because of those people who, who, uh, who, who break the market. Asia Arim are people who uh, fix uh, price fixers. Okay. Which is illegal. You know, price fixing is where people in an industry all get together and fix a high price. 
As it says in the Pasuk, break the arm of the wicked. The David ki amra. When David, when he said it, but she eat amra. He said it in the ninth parak of Tehillim. Actually, he didn't. He said it in the tenth parak of Tehillim. No, the first two are. No, like no that's why Chazal came up. They said it comes with an answer that really the first. Well, that's what uh, that the Tosa says over here. That the first two prakim are actually one one parak of Tehillim, so therefore it really is the ninth. And Okay. Umara ula mar kibutz galiyot. Now, the next question, they're going to change the line of questioning again. We started with a question. We started with a line of questioning that was asked, why is this after this? Why is this after this? Then we went into numbers. Why is it seven? Why is it eight? Why is it nine? Now we're going back to order. Umara ula mar kibutz galiyot la achar b'katashim. And why did they say tekav shofar? Tekav shofar is about the ingathering of the exile. Why did they say the bracha of kibutz galiyot after the bracha of prosperity, of money, economy? Yichtiv, as it says in the Pasuk, Va'atem, Hare Yisrael, and you, O mountains of Israel, an pechem titenu, give out your branches, upir yechem tisu, and bear your fruit, la'ami Yisrael, ki kervu lavo, because they're, they're coming to. So the land of Israel has to start being prosperous in preparation for the ingathering of the exile. The land of Israel lied waste for thousands of years. It was a swamp land. No one could grow anything here. But in order to prepare, so there's a passage that says that the land of Israel, in preparation for the ingathering of the exiles, is going to start being fruitful again. Okay? Good. And once the exiles, now we're not even asking questions. Now we're just making statements. Once the, ga- the exiles have been gathered in, Na'asadzin Barashayim. Once the once the exiles are gathered, then judgment will be done against the wicked. Shenema, as it says, Vashiva Yadai Elias and I will return my hand to you, and I will uh, purify like like uh, impu- like like uh, like impure metal your sigayot your. Well, impurities. It's rough means I will uh, smelt. Is that what it's called? Mm-hmm. Smelt a, a, a metal. To force you guys. Okay, I'll get out your impurities. Mm-hmm. And it says that I will return your judges like the like originally. So after Kibbutz Galia, what's the next bracha? Mm-hmm. So once the ingathering of the exiles happen, then the wicked are dealt with by the by by true Jewish justice. And once we've judged the wicked, and so that's the end of the sinners. The kolel zeitimim. I mean, that includes all the people who are intentionally wicked. That's v'la malshinim. The next bracha. Shenemar. Shenemar, as it says in the pasuk. V'shever poshim v'chataim yachtav v'ozvei Hashem ichlu. I think that's the. Uh, the uh, the sinners and the and the intentional sinners the unintentional sinners are all going to be broken and and removed. The cave in Chicago Hashem, and once the sinners are all gone, speech from Emet Karen Tadikim. What's the next but what's the next bracha? Ala Tadikim. Once the sinners are all gone, the Tadikim will then really rise to prominence. As long as the sinners are around, they kind of run the show. They like to take things over. Once they're out of the way, the, the Tadikim will really be able to to emerge. As it says, all the horns of the wicked I will cut. Like to cut horns means that they have no more attack. To Raman the Karnot I will raise the I will raise the status of the horns of the Tzadik. The Kolel Geri Atzadik. That includes the Geri Atzadik, the righteous converts who are included in the Bracha Al Tzadik. Al Geri Atzadik. We say that every day. Ima Tzadik. That's they're included with the Tzadik. Shenamar as it says, Mipnei Sevat Hakum Badat Pnei Zakeh. Because of the juxtaposition in the Psukim of honoring an elder and a Zakim and being nice to a Ger. So that's why the Gerim and the Tzadikim are together. Where does the raising of the status of Tzadikim happen? What's the next bracha? Yerushalayim Yerushalayim. It happens in Yerushalayim. Shenemar, Shalush Lomi Yerushalayim, Yerushalayim Yerushalayim. The Kevach and Yivnei Yerushalayim, Badavid. Once Yerushalayim is built, what's the next bracha? Etzem Abdavid. It's built. Shenemar, Achar Yashuv B'nei Yisrael. Yishu at Hashem Elohim and David Malkam. The Kevach and Badavid. Once David's there, Bata Tfilah. Now we can really serve Hashem properly. What's the next bracha? Shemayat Tfilah. 
Shemar Rabbi Yosef Mahar Kodshiv, it's Matim Bilei Tzulati. As it says, then I will bring them to my holy mountain and they will rejoice in my in the house of my prayer. In my house of prayer, Rekhevan Shabbat Fila, Bat Avoda. Once we can we can serve God properly, we're really Bat Avoda, then we have the Korbana. Shnemar, Olot Hahem, Mizib Chahem. Very nice. And then once we have that, we can really thank God. Once that has come, Kevan Shabbat Avoda, Bat Toda. Once we have Korbana, now we can really thank God. And once we can thank God, and we have Birkat Kohanim there, because it's uh, all the brachas, and then Shalom. Very nice. You could write the end of the Gemara yourself. Okay. Now, listen to this. This is a strange, strange Gemara. It starts off, how do we know you're supposed to mention the other? How do you know you're supposed to mention God's grace? And then it starts in with order. From that point forward, we're interested in the order. Why is Bina come, come after Kedusha? We didn't care why Kedusha came after Gura, or why Gura came after Avot. We suddenly asked, why is Bina after Kedusha? And then we were so concerned with order. And we were so concerned with order that we messed around a little bit and played games. And we had one puzzle, we chose this puzzle, and then we had Gula, we shoved it in the, in a place where it doesn't even belong based on the Psukim, based on something about uh, the Gula coming in the seventh. But it doesn't really come in the seventh because that's only war of a war kind of geula. So why is the bracha of geula seven? Think about it. It's not in the pasuk after after uh, after slicha. It's not where it belongs going to the pasuk. It's there because of this thing that Mashiach comes in the seventh. But Mashiach doesn't come in the seventh. It comes after the seventh. So we stuck it there anyway because war is also kind of like geula. It's part. It's the beginning of geula. Really. Okay. One interesting key to this whole thing is the Rashi on that Geula thing. Atchalta de Geula. This is Rashi. Okay. See the Rashi, Atchalta de Geula. It's on, you sign the bet, about a third of the way down in Rashi. Maybe a little more, almost halfway way down. Everyone see it? Atchalta de Geula. I'll give you a minute to see, to find it. It's next to the bottom. Can everyone see? It's at the end of the Bach. Where the, where the Bach is finished, parallel to that. Atchal to the Gulahi. The Afal Gat, even though the high Gula, Lav Gula de Galuti, even though this Gula, when we talk about, when we say the Brach of Gula in Shmon Esrei, that is not redemption from Galut. Huh? Ella she galenu mina tarot habaot alenu tamid. Rather, it's referring to the geula that God redeems us from the troubles that befall us all the time. The high the habrikat kibutz ubinyan yerushalayim because the bracha of the ingathering of the exiles and the building of Jerusalem, the tzemach David and the and the sprout of David. Yesh lekol achad brachad brachad atma. Each one of those has its own bracha, and those are all aspects of Gal. Uh, I'm sorry, of Geula. <laughs> Building the Beis Hamikdash. <laughs> Mashiach ben David coming. Those are all separate brachas in Shmuel Esrei. So the Geula bracha can't just be about Mashiach coming, because there's already a bracha for that. So what's it about? So Rashi's working very hard to say that this bracha is not actually about Geula Geula. It's about a Geula which is just getting everyone to stop. Stop. Persecuting us. Okay? okay. That, I, think, I think that that Rashi is the key to this whole thing. Why is Rashi working so hard to say that this Gula is something else other than really Gula? So I believe that the way this monastery works, and if you really pick up on it, in the beginning there's this cause and effect of how humans behave. If you recognize God's holiness, you're going to start to think differently. If you start to think differently, you're going to start to get children. Right? And then it starts turning into other things. But there's this cause and effect going on. I'd like to suggest that the Shwan Esrei, the other key is the line that we started with. The whole piece started by saying that usually when we're told about something, we're not told where it happened. We're told that Shimon Apakuli and Rebbe Gamliel set up the order of these brachas in Yavne. Why is that significant? Yavne was the Jewish, it was the first organized Jewish community in the exile, when there's no more Beit HaMikdash. Remember, the Shimon Esri was originally instituted at the beginning of the Second Temple period. Until the Churban, 
they've been saying Shmon Esrei with a Beit HaMikdash. And it didn't really matter what order you said it in. And some of the brachas were actually different. Some of the brachas could not have been what they are. Think about it. A bracha that asks you, us to rebuild the Beit HaMikdash, they couldn't have been saying that during the Beit HaMikdash. Wait, this is before or after the second I'm saying the, the Shmon Esrei, from when they instituted it, at the beginning of the second Beit HaMikdash period, until the Chorban, couldn't have been what it is today. Exactly. Along comes the Chorban, and then the Jews go to Yavne, and it's like, where's the Jewish people headed? There's no Beit HaMikdash anymore. And the the the, the, the Chachamim of those eras, of the, of the late Mishnah era, early Gemara era, were preparing Kla Yisrael for Gullus. That's what they're doing. There's a lot of indications of that. They were preparing Kla Yisrael for the long Gullus that was ahead. They knew that we were headed into something. That's why Rabbi Huda Nasi said we have to write down the Mishnah. Everyone's going to scatter. We need a book that we're all learning, that we're all on the same page, that we remain one religion. As long as we're all in the same place with a centralized leadership, it doesn't really matter if everything's written down, because everything's in one place. Once we start to scatter, we need, we need the Mishnah to be written. We need, le- we need learning of Torah to be something that everyone does, that everyone remains connected. And, Shemun Gamliel and Shemun Afakuli, the Chorban has just happened. They're in Yavne. We're setting up the Shemun Esrei in the following <coughs> order. What's the order? How do you get into Gullus? How does the Beit HaMikdash get destroyed? Well, you get into Gullus because we do Averas, and we distance ourselves from God, and the Beit HaMikdash gets destroyed. So how do we get out of Gullus? <coughs> it starts, we have a Jewish identity. That's Abba. Yes. We connect to our ancestors. Gvurot. We recognize that God runs the show. That's what Gvurot is. God runs the world. Kedusha. We ascribe holiness to God. We understand He's not just this big guy in charge, but the holiness is a high level of spirituality to reach. Once we have that hashkafa down, we start to think differently. You start to think clearly, and the result of thinking clearly, you start to recognize, you start to think about, how do we get into this mess? How are we going to get out of this? We do tshuva. We do tshuva. We do tshuva. God forgives us. God forgives us now, and this whole time we've been suffering in Gullus. So the next step to get out of the Gullus, before we can even start returning to Israel and setting up a Jewish homeland, <coughs> the first step, the worst aspect of the Gullus is the pogroms and the Holocaust and the Spanish Inquisition and the Chmelnitsky and the Crusades and all these things that the Jews were getting murdered. So the first level of Geula, and it's a level of Geula, is cosmic political change, global political change that puts an end to all of that persecution. The end of the persecution of the Jews, even before we've moved forward to a Jewish homeland, the end of the pogroms and the persecutions and the Holocaust, that itself is a level of Geula. So wars, the wars that come right before the Geula, are part of the Geula process. Of course they are, because they're what changes the political landscape and changes the state of the world so that the Jewish people aren't being persecuted anymore. There's massive political changes sweeping the world, leading up to the Geula, that are ending the persecution of the Jews. Milchama is at the of the Geula. Once those stages have happened, now the land of Israel has to prepare itself. So we quote the Pasuk that says, the reason it's in this order is because the land of Israel actually starts to become fruitful before the Jewish people come back. That's the Nebuah. So sure enough, along come, even before the big wars, even decades before the Holocaust, before the big wars come, it already started, all these wars are happening, the land of Israel, and before the big influxes of Jews in the 1950s and 60s, when all the Jews from Arab lands came, all the Sephardic Jews, and then afterwards the Russian Jews, and hopefully the American Jews, everyone starts to flow back in, but first the land of Israel became very fruitful. Think of all the pictures we were raised with on the walls of our schools, of fruits and vegetables and fields. Eretz Israel became an agriculturally bountiful place. But that's this century only. It was never like that before. Well, it was in the time, in the time of Shlomo. Now. So the land of Israel becomes fruitful again. The next step is in gathering of the exiles. Once the in gathering happens, a sense of moral justice is reinstated. It happens later. It doesn't happen automatically. It's a later stage. 
And then, that defeats the wicked. Once, once the wicked are defeated, we have a kingdom of righteousness, which leads to David Melech, the building of the Beit HaMikdash, Avoda, and ultimately, peace. Shimon Esrei has a plot. It's a story. It's the story of Jewish history. But it's not just it's not the story of all of Jewish history. It's the story of how it is it is the you could call it a story, or you could say that it is the recipe. It is the steps we take to get out of Gullus. And that's why they put it in this order in Yavu. They put it in this order. We've now entered Gullus. It's gonna be a long one. We have to understand what got us into this and how we get out of this mess and what the process we're gonna go through is. And this is going to be said three times a day by Jews all, for all time. So every day, we pull out that checklist of you know, the, the list, the mess, the order of events, and how it works. You have your theology in place, you understand what you're supposed to be doing, you do chuva for the averas that got you into this mess, etc., etc., etc. But one thing I didn't mention is refuah. How does that fit in? Healing. Why is it where it is? So you could say it's after the wars. After the wars, you need a refuah. Picture all those refugees coming in after the Shoah. All you needed to get healed. That's one. That's one way to view it. How is war implied by Re'eh? Where is it? Re'eh Van Yenu. Goel Yisrael. Rashi. Well, that's what Rashi said. Oh, that. No, come on. It actually is because if you look at the text of Re'eh Van Yenu, it's. God, look at our suffering, Rev on Yenu, and fight our battles for us. Riva Rivenu. Save us, it's Yenu, right? Baruch Hashem, go Yisrael. The Redeemer of Israel. But that's a redemption of escaping the suffering. Think of those, those refugee Jews pouring in on those boats right after the state of Israel is declared and before it to the land of Israel. Kal Yisrael had to get healed. Think of how broken we were. Every family lost people. So it could be that the healing means that, um, and it could be the healing just means getting stronger and stronger. That's what healing is. That's what happens after after the wars, after the suffering ends. There's a healing, a strengthening, the prosperity of the land of Israel increases. The exile could gather in, and then the, and then spiritually we start to sort things out. But first the ingathering of the exiles, and then Hashiva Shavtenu, then we get proper leadership. The proper leadership comes after the ingathering of the exiles. Proper leadership comes, brings, and then we deal with the wicked who have been in charge until now. This is, a, this is it's right here in the Gemara. lays out the story for us. This is something that is very easy to wrap your head around. When you're saying Shemun Esrei, from now on, look at it, and just... Remember that that's what you're looking at. You're looking at the history, you're looking at the story of the Jewish people. We, we could quibble about which bracha we're up to, you know? We could argue, like, are we still in the ingathering stages? Are we still in the war stages? Like, you know, where are we, could still be, where are we holding? Uh, you know, are we in the transition from the, from the ingathering of the exiles to the reinstitution of proper Jewish leadership? Maybe we're, maybe we're, maybe we're struggling with that transition. We're somewhere. I don't know exactly. I, it's not our. Uh, it's, uh, that we, we don't have to play games and try to pinpoint it. It's just the idea. This is what sustained Christ. Or this is our tefillah. Our tefillah for all of this 2,000 year Gullus that Jews were every day getting up three times a day saying, was this story. Reminding themselves, this is the recipe. Yes. Ultimate plan for the world. It is. That's why we say it three times a day. Who's controlling the banks? What? <laughs> Who's controlling the banks? And the media? Uh, and Hollywood? Yeah. The real particles would be able to That's right. This is our this is our master plan. Yeah, right. Right. And that's why we recite every day. And that's why when you look at Shimon Esther and say like, we're asking for this, we're asking for this, we're asking for this. If until this point you looked at Shimon Esther as just sort of like this. The shopping list of like things we're asking God for. We want healing. We want this. We want prosperity. I'd like some more cash. I'd like help. I'd like you know. I'd like a lot of things. You know. Yeah, Israel's nice. You can the exiles. That's cool. You know, realize that that this is this is a statement of our faith. It's a statement of faith. And it's a statement of, of our belief system. Not only our belief system in what's important, but in how things are supposed to play. That's the share. If you don't mind, could you? Uh, 
go through it one more time. Go through it one more time? Yeah, from the entire thing? No, 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 just the first bracha to the last one. Okay. How does the vote fit in? It might help if you... Like, a vote is the most basic starting point of Jewish identity. That you connect with the fact that you're a Jew. A vote. Okay. You connect it to Abraham Yitzhak Next, God runs the world. That's the Lurim. Next, God is holy. It's not just that he runs the world like without your fist. How does God being holy... What is, the, what is the third have to do with the second? The second is that God's in charge. He's powerful. But so is Mussolini, you know? Yeah. God is also is, is, is holy. He's good. Okay? okay? Praiseworthy. Okay? okay? Once I have those ideas, my Jewish identity, the about God and what God is and how God runs the show, now I'm starting to think straight. That's understanding. That's the next brother. Once I start to think straight, I start to understand that I have to do tshuva. The next bracha. Once I do tshuva, God forgives me. Once God, once the Jewish people are doing tshuva, God's forgiving us. The next step in the in the Gula process is ending the persecution through these wars that end that change the political landscape. Then the Jewish people heals itself and regains its strength. And then comes the blossoming of the land of Israel, preparing for the return according to the pasuk in Yeshaya. And then the Jewish people return, the ingathering of the exiles, that's the next bracha, we're halfway through now. Right, that's bracha number 10. Okay. And, and then after that comes uh, the restoration of, once everyone's here, we still haven't dealt with, we're just dealing on the physical level yet, getting everyone in. Once everyone's here now, we have to start building a, uh, a, a leadership. We have to now get a leadership that is just and correct. Right. Uh, once that's in place the wicked will be defeated the righteous will rise in status Jerusalem will become the center of that of that moral kingdom David Amelech, or the, the offspring of David Amelech, will that's Mashiach. That's Mashiach. We start to serve Hashem properly. Shema Koleinu, Ritzei, the Beit HaMikdash, Rechaz Kohanim, and peace. That's it. What about Mori? Mori is thanking God. I mean, that's, that's proper service of God. Okay. Right? That's the Karbantoda, they said. It. You know, that's, uh, thanking God for everything. It's the end of the story. Right? That's the happily ever after. That's Shmona Yes. Note that everyone who comes to Israel before Mashiach comes. Sure. Cool. That's everywhere, man. That's in the Gemara. The Hedron also. How, how everyone got into their heads, we talked about this, how everyone got into their heads that everyone has to do tshuva and kutlar and then there's a key with galios and that, and that, or the fact that everyone comes here before we have leadership that's righteous. The leadership that's righteous comes after the ingathering of the exile. So people look around and say, how could this be the beginning of the Gula? Look at the leaders aren't, aren't, you know, aren't righteous. They're not religious. And of course, that's the way it's supposed to happen. First everyone comes, and then uh, and then we sort out the leadership. <coughs> that's just the way it goes. That's, that's the way that it's in so given everywhere. I don't know where people got. I mean, I know where they got the idea, but it's a marginal uh, opinion. Isn't it like throughout the entire Jewish history, like maybe our things are constantly constantly evil. Well, they're messing up. They're flawed people. Yeah. They're always like messing up, like doing worse stuff than. Hopefully, it won't be. We pray for a time that it won't be that way. All right, that's the shir. Um, and we'll do this piece of Enaya from the Kiyos here today? Yeah. Everyone want to do that? Yeah. Okay. So I just need one copy and I'll tell it to you. It's really cool. If you want to get your Gemara brachas to really be, be appreciate this inside, I'll give you a couple of minutes to get a brachas in front of you. Rabbi, what